Here in Fusion, I have some simple CNC joints. First, we have a simple lap joint. You can see here that it is a simple cut out half the distance of the material. Here we have a joint that is very similar to the lap joint. It is a mitered lap joint. And if you look at it, it has half at 45 degree angles cut out. This next joint is a T lap joint. It's similar to the first one, except now it's in the middle of the board. So we can have a T lap created like this. If we want to create some mechanical joinery, we can create a simple dovetail joint as shown here. If we look inside this joint, then the lap part is at the same shape as the top part. The bottom part here we can cut out fine with a CNC machine, but this inside corner will create problems. It won't cut out because of the round uh, radius of the drill bit. It won't cut out because of the round radius of our router bit. Now let's look at a more CNC friendly joint. If we look at this joint, it is made with completely round edges. That means that it'll still function just like a dovetail joint, but now we are being more true to the process of CNC machining. Neither joint is correct, but we can make joints that are more simpler to machine. So let's go ahead and make all these joints in Fusion 360 now. So now that we've looked at those joints, let's see how we can model them. The first thing I'm going to do is create a component, new component, and I'm gonna call this lap one. Inside this component, I'm gonna create a sketch, but let's look at some user parameters that I've created. I've created a parameter called ply, which will be the thickness of the plywood, width, which will be the width of the boards, length is the width of the boards, and a buffer that is width divided by five, so we can have some space around certain joints. I'll create a sketch on the ground plane, and I'll use a center point rectangle. I'll click on the origin, drag out, I'll type length, then tab, then width, enter, and then that fully defines the sketch. I need to add one more line. Here's a line here. We'll go ahead and dimension that to width, and now we can finish our sketch. If I look here, I can make an extrude of this section, and I can make the distance ply. Now I need to show the sketch again by twirling out in the browser. I can show the sketch, make another extrude, grab this section, and go ply divided by two. And then I can hide that sketch. As you can see, we have our first lap joint. Let's create a new component. We'll call this lap two, and let's create a sketch. We'll create a sketch right on top of that lap. We'll press P to project it in. So now we have that geometry to reference. We'll make a rectangle and we'll make it width, tab, length. And now we are ready to finish our sketch and extrude. So we'll click extrude in this section first. And instead of going one side, we'll go symmetric and we'll go ply divided by two. Then we'll show the sketch again. We'll make one more extrusion and it'll be this section and we'll go ply divided by two, and we'll make sure it's set to join. Hide the sketch. We can twirl both of these up, activate the main component, and we have a lap joint. Let's make a mitered lap joint. So let's create a new component, call it miter lap one, and we'll create a sketch on the ground plane. Let's draw a rectangle. Again, we can type length, so we can create another rectangle and draw the rectangle. We can type length, then tab, then width. We have that all set up, but we need to tell where it is so we can make the top of it collinear. And then we can dimension how far it is from the origin. And let's go ahead and make it 200 from the origin. We need to do a couple more lines. So let's draw a line from here to here and a line from the two corners. We'll dimension this line to be width. We'll select this bottom line and make it a construction line. And now we can finish our sketch. Let's go ahead and extrude this first piece and that'll be a distance of ply. We need to show the sketch again. And if we do this piece, press E to extrude and then we can do ply divided by two. Hide the sketch, create a new component. This component will be miter lap two. 
create a sketch and we can create a sketch right on that miter joint. Press P to project. So now we have that geometry in our sketch. R for a rectangle and then we'll draw out. And you can try to hit right there, but we can also just type width, tab, length. And then we have everything we need. Finish the sketch, rotate around. Let's grab the extrude tool. We want to go symmetric. And then ply divided by two. We want to do one more extrude. And in this case, we could use the sketch or just this geometry right here and come up ply divided by two. Make sure it says join. Let's go ahead and make a T lap joint. So it's very similar to this lap joint, but a little bit different. So we'll create a new component and we'll call it T lap one. We can draw a rectangle and I'll type length, then tab, then width. So we have that defined, but we still need to make it collinear with the top of this. And then we need to dimension it from the origin. And let's go 425. Excellent. So now we need to draw our T in the middle. So we can dimension this by drawing a rectangle and then dimension that rectangle as width. And for this demonstration, I want this to be in the middle. So I know what these lengths are. So I can just use a simple equation to dimension this. I can do parentheses, length minus width, and then divide that by two. So that'll always be centered even if we change the length. Now I can finish my sketch. Let's do an extrude. I want these two pieces to be fully ply. Okay, okay. We'll show the sketch again. And then we'll press E to extrude, click this piece, and we'll go ply divided by two. And then we can hide that sketch, twirl this piece up, right click on the main assembly, new component. We'll call this T lap two. Create a sketch right on the lap, press P to project. Now we have that geometry, let's make a rectangle. And again, we can type width, and then length. Should be fully constrained, finish the sketch. We'll do E to extrude, symmetric. Apply divided by two, and then one more extrude, and we'll say ply divided by two, make sure it's on join. Activate the top level component. Now we have three joints. Now let's make a traditional dovetail joint. That's a T lap. So we'll create a new component at the top. Call this dovetail one. Create a sketch on the ground plane. Move over just a little bit. We'll draw our first rectangle. And again, we can type length, tab, width. It's all defined except for two distances. We'll make it collinear. And then we'll define the distance from the origin. We'll say 650. Now we need to add our dovetail. So we can do this a number of different ways. We'll get a two point rectangle. We will dimension this rectangle width. We'll also dimension this to be parentheses length minus width divided by two. So that just centers that. Now we need to have two lines and we can go all the way to the width, but we can also have it a little bit uh, skinnier than the width, it's up to us. In this case, I'll make it the full width. We need to give this a dimension. I'm gonna make this width minus buffer. And then we need to move this piece in. And I think I wanna have this buffer times two. And then I can use the equal constraints to make both of those equal. That will keep the angles centered and we are now fully constrained. Well, we could do one more thing. If we edit this sketch, then we want to just click these two lines and make those construction lines and it'll make our extrusions easier. Now we can go to the extrude command, press E. We'll select these two outside pieces and they'll go up a distance of ply. Say okay. We'll reshow the sketch. And then we'll extrude again. The center piece will go ply 
divided by two. We can hide the sketch and twirl it up. We'll create a new component. This one will be dovetail two. Create a new sketch. Let's do it right on the lap there. Press P to project that geometry in. Now we'll draw a rectangle. Again, starting at this top corner, we'll type width, tab length. There's a couple ways we could get this in. We could draw a line or we could project in. In this case, I'm just going to project in these two lines. And I'll say OK. So now I have a geometry that I can use here. And I can also draw a line if you wanted to do it that way. So either way will work fine. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. And now I need to extrude. This first one will be symmetric. And I'll make this ply divided by two. Let's reshow the sketch. Again, I could have used that geometry, but we can also use the sketch. And then we'll go ply divided by two. Make sure it's joined, press OK, hide the sketch. We'll activate the top component. And now we have four joints that work great. Well, except for this one. This one, this inside corner doesn't cut very well on a CNC because the router bit will be round and it'll have to round this off. So we could have a dog bone fillet here or we could hand cut this out afterwards, but we're using a CNC machine. Why don't we take advantage of the tool that we're using? So I'm going to make one more dovetail and I'm going to call this curvy dovetail. Let's make a new component, curvy dovetail one. Make a sketch right on the ground plane. We'll move over, press R for rectangle. We will draw our same rectangle. We'll go length, tab, width. Let's make it collinear with the other ones. And then dimension the left side from the origin. So we'll dimension it 875. But we're not finished yet. We need to draw a rectangle in the middle. And we can type width, tab, width. And that will be automatically dimensioned. We can then do our equation to put it in the center. So we can type length minus width divided by two. Now it's in the center. So let's draw a curvy dovetail. So let's draw a circle in the middle and we'll make this width minus buffer for its diameter. We need to draw two more circles. So I'm going to grab the circle tool and we'll draw one here and one here. Let's put some constraints on these circles. We want these circles to be tangent to each other. We also want these circles to be tangent to the lap on both corners. Now we just need to give these circles a dimension. So I'll click on it and I'm going to give it a dimension of buffer. And then I can give this one the same dimension of buffer. And now we have a fully constrained sketch. We can select these two lines, make those construction lines, and then we're ready to finish our sketch. Let's press E for extrude. We want that whole outside piece and these two little circles. We will extrude ply and say, okay. We'll reshow the sketch. Extrude again. This time we'll click all three of these interior pieces and we'll extrude ply divided by two. Hide the sketch, twirl that component up. Now you can see that we have an interior cut that can be made by the CNC machine with our router bit. Now we'll make one more component. New component, curvy dovetail two. Create a new sketch right here. Let's project that geometry in. And now let's draw a rectangle. I'm just going to draw a rectangle anywhere to show that we can use constraints to line it up. We can use our collinear constraint to make this edge collinear with this edge. It will automatically project that in. We can give it a dimension of width and give this a dimension of length. And then we can put this in the middle. There's many different ways we could reference from the middle geometry, or we could just center it like we did before. I think what I'll do is I'll make do it a different way. I'll draw from this midpoint to here. Then I'll use the perpendicular constraint on this line. That will center that up. 
I'll select this line and make it a construction line. We need to do one more thing. We need to have a line right here. So I'll draw a line. When we draw lines this close, a lot of times they won't be collinear. So you want to be really careful whenever you're drawing lines close to each other. I always like to move them to the side, then click the collinear constraint and make sure that I have them collinear. And I'll finish my sketch. I'll rotate, press E to extrude, click this one. We'll go symmetric. Apply divided by two. We'll reshow the sketch. Press extrude again. We'll get that centerpiece, ply divided by two. Hide the sketch, activate the top level component. Now you can see that this will be able to be cut by the CNC. It's much better than this traditional dovetail joint because now everything will be done right from the beginning. So try out these CNC joints yourself and then we will be able to make more advanced and complex CNC joinery.